there! Today we'll be creating this city scene with earth tone coloured graphite pencils. But before we get into it, if you love art, then don't forget to have a look at the other lessons at our website at www.montmart.net because there is lots more there, as well as links to our Facebook and Instagram pages and to our art club, The Creative Connection. surface I'll be using a sheet of Montmartre 300 GSM watercolour paper in A3 sizing. If you download the PDF at the website you will find this image. Turn it over and shade the back side. Flip it over, tape it into position onto a clean sheet and retrace the line work. Use a HB pencil and make sure you get all of the information in. This line work will be relayed back in with a pen, so all you really need is an approximate positioning. It just ensures you can get the correct angles. Lay in the perimeter line and then we can add pen. The pen I'm using is a black ballpoint pen. I've always loved using these types of pens for drawing and I feel they tend to get overlooked in art. There is many great attributes offered by the humble ballpoint pen. They are oil based so they won't run when they come into contact with water and they are really nice to use just because of the way they roll over the surface. The amount of ink can be controlled by how soft or hard you press but also by the angle the pen is held at and they're very economical too. Look at the reference image on the last page and have a look also at photos of cities. This is fairly close to a pen and ink style treatment inasmuch as the details are suggested with the fine pen work and colours are loosely put in. In most cases the pen is the last step as one can choose at what areas require what level of detail as the colour generally carries a lot of the constructive rendering. So the pen is used with an economy in mind but as this is fairly structured and detailed I'm putting the pen work in first. It's also my favourite part of the project. This is the technique favoured for children's books and was used by architects for concepts before computer-aided design programs were the norm. It is also used by comic book artists and landscape painters as a preparatory work created to solve any compositional problems before the proper work was started. Trees can be drawn in as a mass by suggesting the outline. For colour, I'm using the Montmartre Graphite Earth Tone Coloured Graphite Pencils. There is 12 tones in the pack and to familiarise myself with these tones, I lay them out in their order. These colour swatches will also be my palette as I will be using the water soluble pigments that the pencils offer. Once they are all laid in, I use a fine Montmartre water brush to transform the dry pigment into washes. You can see the water brings out some vibrancy. So now I know how the colours will look, I start to apply it over the drawing, starting with the high rises that occupy the skyline. The thing to bear in mind here is that the more dry pigment laid down, the stronger the colour will be when water is added. The earth tones offer a realistic, muted tone that looks truthful and authentic. Once the skyline buildings are laid in, I create a swatch of purple. Dissolve it with the water brush and lay it into the sky. I have not pre-wet the paper first and just lay it on directly into the area. Although it's a pretty loose application, I roughly fade it out as I move up the buildings. I leave some areas free of colour to suggest clouds and keep the water out of the buildings as best I can. If you feel the colour is too strong, just add more water and dab it with a tissue. Let the sky dry and then add the first green. 
there is three types of green in the earth tone set. A sort of viridian, a kind of olive drab and one I'll call khaki. Lay the latter one down first over all of the foliage areas. A really good attribute of these pencils is that a colour can be laid down, activated with water, dried and can then be overlaid with other colours, giving it real depth. Once the first green is all on, I add water to the high rises, then all of that foliage. the other two greens laid over it, with the darkest tone covering the areas of deep shadow. This gives the mass a rounder shape. I lay in the brown of the trunks and then lay the roads in with the greys and a touch of purple. The grey of bitumen has quite a few tones in it, and a good way to blend colours is to lightly overlay a tone on the top of another tone. Colouring the tone directly gives a pleasing finish and breaks up any possible monotony from lots of coats with no textures. I then move on to each individual building. Use the swatch sheet as the palette to load up the water brush and lay in the colours. The more water, the lighter the tone will be. Take into account the light source also. This is particularly noticeable on the differing angles of the roof. It's a good lesson to provide yourself with a fairly limited range of tones. When you have a large palette, with colours from the entire spectrum, one tends to pick the same colours in situations. For example, I would not generally have chosen a purple for the sky, but I did in this case and it really worked in this painting.
See you next time.